So I know what you're thinking. There's a huge difference between how the West portrays a Dark Goddess and how the East portrays a Dark Goddess. But in these boxes right here, I have two figures that all ends of the world can appreciate. Starting with the first box. This first figure was definitely something I've been waiting for for quite some time. And it's the Fate Grand Order Semiramis Luxury Gift Figure by Fat Company. For those that don't know, Semiramis was born from a mermaid goddess. And after some unfortunate events, she married the king of the Assyrian Empire. Her new husband later died from an arrow or by poisoning, all depending on which story you read, but it did lead her to take control of the army and put herself on the throne. Now, historically, women of the Assyrian Empire were not allowed to hold positions of authority or power, but Semiramis was believed to rule over the Assyrian Empire for 5 or 42 years, all depending on which story you read. So, whether she's a villain from Fate Apocrypha or a conqueror and builder in real life, we can all agree that she's definitely a badass individual. Which brings me to talk about this badass Fate figure. She's actually a lot better than what I was expecting. First, I want to say that I'm glad that they made her larger than how she appeared in her early photos. She sits around the same height as Hokusai. Now the outfit is just beautiful, so many waves, wrinkles and edges. It really makes this figure wonderfully complex. I love how they did the fur around her dress, and her hair is such a neat design. It really drew me into this figure, and I'm so glad it has great shading. The jewelry is definitely fantastic eye candy I can stare at, and I do want to say that the face is beautiful with that devilish smile. I really like the veil, but you don't have to use it, especially if you want to show off more of her breathtaking hair. And yes, I'm going to say it, you can display her dressless. Kind of. The overall paint job is better than expected. After seeing some early photos, I was worried that the tiara was going to be a sloppy mess. And while the paint job is not perfect, unless you're looking for issues, I think you'll find that the paint job works. Also, the base fits the figure and complements the color themes of it. So this is a pretty amazing figure, but it isn't without faults. Putting it together sucked. A lot. My first issue was putting in her left foot peg. The plastic on the base was too thick and would break her heel of the shoe if I didn't file it down. And I had to also file down slightly the peg for her right side hair bun to make it fit as well. And doing all this was made worse because she had so many pointy edges and thin hair strands and spiked boots and other sharp items that you could snag on and break when putting it all together. So when putting her together, do it slowly and carefully. My only other notable call out is her tummy. The anatomy is a bit weird. Not sure if they were going for lower abs or a well-defined inguinal ligament. But yeah, on this figure, it's just a bit too high since it runs to the edges of her ribcage and not to the top of her hips. Overall, I'm in love with this figure. It took a long while to get her, but she was well worth the wait. And she's definitely that dark mistress I would want to have rule over me. And I want to say that I like where Fat Company is going with these complex luxury gift figures for the Fate series. I'm really looking forward to seeing more. And if you want to see more of this character, check out Fate Apocrypha. Now moving on to our next dark figure. I don't know what it is, but Isekai's suck me in. And you can call me a simp, because this has been my phone's lock screen for the last year, which is the artwork from the Overlord Season 2 credits. Which means I'm happy to finally open up Albedo's white dress version by Furuyu. Now I'm sure Overlord fans would know, Albedo is described as a woman with lustrous black hair and a face of a goddess. To which some people actually believe she's a goddess or an angel. And despite her uncontrollable infatuation with Ainz, Albedo is the guardian overseer that holds the highest ranking position in Nazarek, reporting only to the supreme beings, which in turn makes her a dark mistress. So let's talk about this Albedo figure. I'm really glad that she turned out like her photos. Her dress looks fantastic. It's simple with a good amount of ruffles and detailed wrinkles in all the right places. I really like how it turned out. Also, I love the tan shading that they put into the dress. It would have really sucked if they just made it a bland white. And I think one thing that many people will overlook is the hair. It's actually done with a lot of individual strands. Which is surprising to me because I was expecting the hair to be mostly a solid block since it would have been much easier to mass produce. So good on them for putting so much detail in the hair. Now the black oily liquid that drips from her hands also looks good. It's glossy and a bit transparent and has a lot of bumps and curves that makes it seem more liquid-like with the transparency. I really love the shape of the wings and how it wraps around a beto. It really adds to this beautiful pose. Because in all reality, the pose is most likely the primary reason why you bought this figure. And the base is a multi-level platform which has an odd shape, which works for what they were going for. I'm really glad that they didn't make it a circular base, and it only takes up the space that it needs to. Now for my callouts, the feathers are a bit more melted than the other Abedo figures. I just wish they were a bit more crisp. And the oily liquid in her hands doesn't fall in the right spots that's marked on the base, like in the promo photos. Her hands are about a centimeter forward, which doesn't really line up with the base. It's not a big issue, I just wanted to call it out. And lastly, this figure is expensive. Like Prince Eugen expensive. Like new 1-4 scale bunny figure expensive. And I don't quite understand why the cost is so high. Because I have a lot of figures that are much larger and much more complex, but half the price. But regardless of my nitpicks, overall I love this figure. Mainly because I love the artwork and the pose and the overall presentation of it. And yes, I'm totally simping over it. 
Now, I would recommend this figure if you're a diehard Albedo fan, but if not, there's a lot of other Albedo figures out there that are just as good for a much lower price. Anyway, that's all the figures I have in this small haul. I do have some more guides and unboxings coming in the near future, so stay tuned. And I do want to say thanks again for watching. I hope to see you all again soon and take care.